What's up everybody? Welcome to today's vlog, Aggie Out Loud. I'm back once again. What's today? Cause you know I never know because I work third shift and I never know what day it is. <sighs> Today is Sunday. Yeah, it's Sunday. Okay. So, I wanted to share some information with y'all. For those that have been subscribed to my YouTube channel for a while, more than likely have already seen the video that if you go into my playlist and look for conspiracy theory slash topics videos, it's in that playlist. And I do not remember the title of it because I think I have more than one video of, of that topic, but or of this topic, but it's about the paranormal field. It's about ghost hunting and demonic activity. And being that I'm working on another demonic case at the present time, I really wanted to do another video on the topic of the paranormal. For any of those individuals out here in this world who need a little bit more information. <laughs> now I've been doing, I've been a, um, a demonologist and a deliverance minister since 2003. So I'm fully aware about the demonic, what doors one can open to allow demonic activity into themselves as well as their surroundings, their home, their business, and so on and so on and like I said I don't want to share too much information or details on the case I'm working on right now as as I speak because I'm going to be actually uploading a series of videos it's, it's, it's going to be a video series that I will be uploading to this YouTube channel and each video will be a different episode containing containing revealing a different demonic case that I have worked on and or are presently working on so the demonic case that I'm working on now I went with one of my assistants to the house last week and I did my initial walkthrough. There's different phases to a complete investigation of a home that has demonic activity. And I've, ex I've, I've shared with y'all what phases or the steps in order that I, that, that I do when I go into a home that has demonic activity the phases and steps that I do in order when I'm dealing with a person that is either partially possessed, demonically oppressed, or fully possessed are a little bit different, a lot different actually, than the phases and the steps that I take when, I, when I'm working on a, a, a demonic infestation of a home, a business, land, or what have you. So, but you know, I'm just going to get down to the point. I, growing up, you know, I, I thought like everybody else did when it comes to the paranormal, when it comes to ghosts and hauntings, and I was all up in it like the next person. However, my experiences were predominantly outside of you know the 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 odd happenings here and there that I wouldn't say was demonic but it definitely was not a ghost or um, a spirit of a deceased person they just those experiences just weren't demonic in um, in nature but my experiences with the paranormal have been in the demonic and even growing up, not just when I hit adulthood, it, it, it's, it's been around me my whole life. And 
I discovered early on in my life what one of my callings was, and that was a deliverance minister. A deliverance minister is the exact same thing as an exorcist, okay? And a demonologist. So I knew that this was one of my callings. But to just put that to the side for a second, I am a Christian, and as a Christian, when I go into a home and or when I am helping an individual that is oppressed demonically or possessed demonic possession, I enter the situation with biblical truth. I enter the environment with scripture because what people need to understand is this battle is not in the physical realm this battle with with demonic entities is a spiritual fight it is a spiritual battle on the front lines in everybody's life and when I was in the paranormal field, I needed as a Christian to get some clarification on if a person passes away, can they honestly, truly come back in the form of a ghost, a spirit? Can they come back and honestly haunt a person and or place? and or thing. I needed proof of that. I needed somewhere in the Bible that told me, yes, when you die, you can come back to earth and haunt the living and or haunt an environment. I needed scripture that could show me that that was true or untrue before I could continue in this field so I delved into the Bible and I found specific scripture okay that specifically states that when you die in no way shape or form do you ever come back to earth to haunt the living to visit loved ones, to haunt land, to haunt a business, a home, absolutely not. So I delved e even deeper than that in the word, being that I'm a demonologist and deliverance minister, and I wanted scripture that told me that it was definitely demonic, <coughs> and I found it. And it is this, it is these scriptures and this one truth that made me go from ghost hunting at an earlier age to straight up deliverance of the demonic from people and places. So I have some notes here that I want to share with y'all. And, you know, I ask y'all to do y'all's own research. If you don't believe me or if you are questioning the scriptures, please feel free to delve into the word yourself. You will find everything I'm saying to be 100% true. <clears throat> I'm trying not to cough and I'm sorry. So I'm going to just delve right into it, okay? The, these are, um, I have specific notes I use when I'm dealing with the demonic, and I just wanted to share some of those with you. Okay, let me take a sip of water. I'm so sorry, but if not, I'm going to start hacking. <coughs> I ain't even start coughing until I started, until I hit record. Okay, so here we go.
Okay, the Bible warns us against trying to communicate with familiar spirits or ghosts. It's in the Bible in Isaiah 8, 19. <clears throat> when they say to you, consult the mediums and the spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? Can the dead communicate with the living? It's in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 through 6 and 10. The dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Meaning on the planet on this earth for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave <coughs> now let's just pause there for a second for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave so when you pass away you have apps you you do not retain any knowledge of your previous self you do not retain any knowledge or wisdom or work nor device nothing that pertains to who your family members were where you lived on this earth where you used to work where your cat lives now your dog there's you don't have no remembrance of that so all these ghost hunters and people on this planet that are saying I saw my mama she passed away in 1999 and I woke up in the middle of the night and lo and behold I saw her at the end of my bed baby girl I wish I could tell you that that was your mama that died in 1999 but honey it is not <laughs> it is a demonic spirit I'm gonna get into that let me just keep Keep on moving. How does the Bible describe death? It's in the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4.14 4, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. If the dead are sleeping, who are the spirits of our dearly departed? Fallen angels, can dis Fallen angels for those that don't know, are demonic spirits. Demons. Fallen angels can deceive us by appearing as good beings, even spirits of people we are familiar with, loved ones, deceased relatives. It's in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. Evil spirits can perform miracles and signs to deceive. It's in the Bible, Revelation 16, 14. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great, I'm sorry, of that great day of God Almighty. We do not have to be afraid of demonic impersonations of the living and the dead. If we give our hearts to Jesus and stay away from such satanic activities such as seances, Ouija boards, etc., it's in the Bible. 1 John 4, 1 and 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are not, whether they are or are not of God. You are of God, little children, and, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus has authority over demons. It's in the Bible. Luke 4:35 through 4, 4 I'm sorry, Luke 4:35 through 36. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is this teaching? With authority and power he gives orders to evil spirits and they come out in the name of Jesus. 
Okay, now let me say this. It does not matter your race. It does not matter where you are from, how old you are. It does not matter. If you stare at evil, it's going to stare back. Okay? If you stare at evil, it will stare back at you. Um, I'm just going over a quick, um, some, some, some of my quick uh, notes. I'm sorry for that brief pause. What does the Bible say about ghosts? Are ghosts real? In the King James Version of the Bible, the word ghost, now this is very important. In the King James Version of the Bible, the word ghost appears 108 times. Of these, the word is never, never, never used in the sense of the disembodied spirit of someone who has died. It is used in only two ways. First, it is, it is used in the phrase to give up the ghost, meaning to die. Second, it occurs as the title, the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Godhead or Trinity. The Bible refers to the spirits of the dead as familiar spirits, as in intimate association, personal, or one well acquainted. See Leviticus 19.31, Deuteronomy 18.11, 2 Kings 21.6, Isaiah 8.19, and warns against having anything to do with them. Can the dead haunt houses? It's in the Bible. Job 7, 9 through 10. As the cloud disappears and vanishes away, so he who goes down to the grave does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him anymore. Can the dead talk with the living? It's in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 through 6. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Nevermore will they, will they have a share in anything to do under the sun. Now I know I have already mentioned that, but I wanted to mention this again, okay? If people die with unfinished business to care for, do they become ghosts and haunt the places and people they knew in life? It's in the Bible, Psalm 146.4. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. What does the Bible say about communicating with familiar spirits or ghosts? It's in the Bible, Isaiah 8.19. And when they say to you, consult the mediums and the spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people consult their God? What does the Bible say about those who communicate with familiar spirits? It's in the Bible, Leviticus 19.31. Give, no give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them, to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Now let me just share this real quick. You know how they have these shows on TV and it'll be a psychic medium? And she'll have in front of her a whole audience full of people. Or, or, and, or, you've got these shows on TV where it'll be a psychic medium. And they follow her throughout the day. And it's just like any other regular day. And she'll walk up to strangers and, 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 and let them know about themselves and their past loved ones. And what messages they may have. Let me share this with y'all, okay? Because there is a lot of naive folk on this planet okay demonic spirits okay satan demons they know everything about you everything 
They know about every struggle you've had in your life, every trial, every everything, every sad moment, every loss, every gain. So let's say that in one of these shows, the psychic medium having before her an audience of people points out to a woman in the audience. I'm using this as, as an example, but listen up. Points out to a woman in the audience. Your mother passed away. So then the woman in the audience is like, oh my God, I know she's real because nobody here knew that but me. Please tell me, do you have a message for me from her? So then the psychic medium says, um, she's, 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 she's mentioning to me about the blue box, something about a blue box. And then the woman in the audience, of course, is like, oh my God, now I really, really, really know that you're real because nobody knew about that blue box but me and my mother. Let me say this. Satan did. Satan and his demons knew about that blue box. One thing people need to realize is that demons, demonic spirits, they're right here by your ears every single day. Trying to feed into your mind and into your ears, not audibly, but they... they they, 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 they try to whisper things to you. They try to get into your mind. They know what weaknesses you have. If you were on your deathbed, God forbid, and you told your, your, your child a secret, the demons heard it. Satan heard it. So when you go to see a psychic medium and she tells you that on your mother's deathbed she told you a secret and this is what it was, do not think for one second that she got that information from the Lord. Okay? When, when you have these famous psychic mediums and even the ones that aren't so famous, they get their information from demonic spirits. Okay? And demonic spirits, they knew about the blue box, baby girl. They knew it. Was the blue box real? Well, did your mama tell you something about a blue box? Yes. Okay. Well, guess what? Like I said, they knew that and they fed that psychic medium that exact bit of information. And then she fed it to that woman in the audience. Same thing with tarot cards. Same thing with horoscopes. I just needed people to understand that. Okay, moving on. Are ghosts real? Ghosts are real, but they are not, but they are not angels from God or our dead loved ones. They are fallen angels, demons, trying to deceive us. It's in the Bible. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to give a little bit more information. Okay, the closest biblical example of a haunting is found in Mark. 5, 1 through 20. A legion of demons possessed a man and used the man to haunt a graveyard. There were no ghosts involved. It was a case of a normal person being controlled by demons to terrorize the people of that area. Demons only seek to kill, steal, and destroy. John 10, 10. They will do anything within their power to deceive people. To lead people away from God. This is very likely the explanation of ghostly activity today. Whether it is called a ghost 
or a poltergeist, if there is genuine activity occurring, it is the work of demons. Now, let me say this. If you're laying in your bed at night, example, and you wake up and you see at the end of your bed, I'll give another a similar example and your father passed away in 1980 and at the end of your of your bed is your father looking like a ghost right have you ever thought about this this is just a thought okay if the demonic spirit manifested itself in the physical realm as its true physical self it would freak the hell out of you, right? You would run, you would hide. You would pray to God. You would call out the name of Jesus, right? But if the demonic spirit manifests itself as someone that was close to you, someone you loved and you cherished with all of your heart, if you're already naive, then you're going to believe that that's your father. But the point that I am making is that 9 out of 10, you're going to try to talk to that ghost that you think is your father when it's in all actuality a demonic spirit. If you see your father appear to you at the end of your bed and he passed away in 1980, example, there's more of a chance that you will sit there and try to communicate with him. Or in some way, shape, or form, try to invite the spirit of your father to sit down with you. Demons masquerade as people that we loved, okay, that have long gone. If you had a cat, or a dog that passed away and you started out of nowhere and all the windows in your crib was closed you start to hear the sound of your long lost dog and your dog that passed away that is not the spirit of your puppy dog or your cat that is a demonic being demonic spirits can take the form shape sound vocally audibly um, smell of anything and or anyone if you were Satan, okay, I'm just trying to help y'all to get what I'm trying to get into y'all's mind, okay? And these are not my words. This is all biblical. If you were Satan, just hypothetically speaking, and you were out to deceive this planet, would you go around or would you send your demons to go around and manifest themselves as who they truly look like? No, you would not. You would have your demons and or yourself as Satan show up as an angel of light or as a deceased loved one or as the lady that jumped off the bridge and killed herself in the 1800s that now Ghost Adventures is going in the, 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 the hotel to now investigate. Okay, these, these EVPs, that people get and it sounds like the voice of the person that passed away it is not it is a demonic spirit they can sound female just like they can sound male they don't always growl okay they've got vocal cords okay so when you see these ghost adventure shows or taps ghost hunters and and they get an EVP and um, let's say that one of the investigators asked the question of um, are you dead and then an EVP, an EVP comes back saying I am dead or I died that's a demonic being demonic spirits are everywhere all the time Okay, so whenever that woman who killed herself by jumping off of a bridge or a hotel balcony in the 1800s, whenever she did that, demonic spirits were there. And you can almost guarantee that they had something to do with her doing that. 
okay? So of course, a hundred years later, or whenever, when, a, when ghost um, investigators or paranormal investigation teams come into a location where a person committed suicide or was murdered or whatever, of course they're gonna get an EVP of, of exactly what happened or evidence that this was the person that, that, that killed themselves. Because demonic spirits know everything that has to do with that. Demonic spirits also like to manifest as children because why? We all love kids. Children are innocent. They're special. And if you see a spirit or a ghost of a child, you, 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 there's a feeling to want to embrace the child and help the child. And how did you die? And you want to communicate. And by doing that, you are opening up a door. You are opening up a door to the other side. As a deliverance minister and a demonologist, I have to tell you that, you know, we all make mistakes. Ain't none of us perfect. God never asks for perfection. But the point that I'm trying to make is, you know, like when you were a teenager and maybe you played with the Ouija board here or there, maybe you did it every day. I don't know. But now, but then nothing kind of happened, you know, and now 30 years, 20 years, 15 years later, you're starting to all of a sudden feel some, something that, that, that ain't right in your home or even within yourself. You opened those doors when you did that. You never closed the door. You never confessed, you never repented, you never asked for forgiveness for that. So you left that